although West Virginia, for most people, is a place to escape, it's nestled in the National Quiet Zone, where people can leave the hustle and bustle of the city. There's a lot of people from out of state and out of the area that would love to own property here, but uh, just a nice little town. But Mill Point, West Virginia, is just down the road from Hillsboro. It's where the Turner Diaries author, Dr. William Pierce, purchased a lot of land and set up the home base for what was once the most dangerous neo-Nazi organization in America, the National Alliance. We're white, we're of European ancestry, and we want to remain conscious of that. In 1995, Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols detonated a bomb that destroyed a federal building in Oklahoma City. Copies of the Turner Diaries and another one of Pierce's books, The Hunter, were found by the FBI in McVeigh's car. The setup and the travel uh, in that book is exactly the Oklahoma City bombing. Oklahoma City put Pierce and the National Alliance in the spotlight, but they showed up on authorities' radar long before Oklahoma City. Born in Atlanta, Pierce was a bright student, receiving a degree in physics from Rice University. After working as an aerospace manufacturer in Connecticut, Pierce moved to Washington, D.C. and became an associate of the American Nazi Party. The American Nazi Party, which was run by a guy named George Lincoln Rockwell. Um, Pierce and Rockwell kind of had a split. Pierce went to a youth uh, type of organization to try and recruit uh, younger individuals into the white power, white nationalist, uh, anti-Semitic movement. And, and um, he separated from the American Nazi Party. He had all the debate points memorized, you know, he, he could debate anybody and he could, you know, he, he could do a good job of convincing you that he was right. His son says he was brainwashed by his father's ideology, but Dr. Pierce used more than talking points. I wasn't consciously aware um, at that point that I had been abused. Unfortunately, by the time I left home when I was 18, I, I believed most of what my dad taught me. You know, and I also had a very uh, other essential ingredient to being a hater, and that was that I hated myself. The younger Pierce says a turning point occurred when his father left the family to build the National Alliance compound at Mill Point. The first thing that probably happened was, you know, having a, uh, a roommate of color um, while I was at Virginia Tech and really liking this guy. He was such a humanitarian. He cared so much about, you know, other people, and he showed that, and he was very politically aware, which I was not. Probably the biggest aspect of all that was, is realizing that the way I felt and the way I looked at others, actually deep down inside myself, felt wrong. But in Pierce, there was still a little boy longing for his father's love. A couple years before his dad's death, Calvin invited his father to watch him hang glide in West Virginia. I had a good flight. He saw the whole thing. He came down to the landing field. He was just like, wow, that, that was amazing. I can't believe you did that. And uh, I felt like that was the only time in my life that I impressed him. But that was the last time I saw him. When Pierce died of cancer in 2002, Calvin attended his father's memorial service at the compound. I did get a lot of closure from that. And... Um, yeah, it was a um, very important moment for me, for sure. For Kelvin, it was not just a moment of closure. It was a turning point. The road to the National Alliance compound in Mill Point is breathtaking. Neighboring Hillsborough is home to Pearl Buck, the first American woman to win the Nobel Prize in literature. But the other person who made this area famous is just a footnote to locals. They say the founder of the National Alliance is best forgotten. We never ever see him, we never hear from him. They never caused any problems with anybody around town or in the community that I know of. It's a bumpy road driving up to the compound. There's an open gate and even happy pumpkins at the entrance. But despite my weight, no one is there to talk about the group on this day. Through research at the assessor's office, we did confirm the property is still owned by the Cosmotheist Community Church. It was founded by Dr. Pierce and is part of the National Alliance. This is one of two entrances we were able to find to the compound. We spoke with neighbors who say there's roughly four people still living inside, but what they do in there remains a mystery. I've known them all for years and years and years. 
Um, I don't know that there's anything that goes on here other than they still own the property and they might bring some books in and ship them out to the, you know, but there's no major things going on here. William Pierce's son, Kelvin, has made two trips to the property since his father's passing in 2002. He was able to take a tour inside and talk to the organization's new leader, Will Williams. He, he told me that he's building the National Alliance back. He said that, you know, people have counted us out, thought that we were gone, and, but he said, in his own words, he said, but we are back. You know, we had a long talk and then he said, yes, you know, as long as you leave the cameras there, you can walk around. So I went into the trailer where my dad lived and died and it's in really bad shape now. And, um, you know, just kind of reminisced about things and kind of tried to visualize again my dad there. While Pierce says he was told by Williams that the organization is working to build back, their headquarters is now in Tennessee. Court records show Williams was arrested in 2015 for battery against another member inside the compound. But outside these gates, the Pocahontas County Sheriff's Department says the group has never had a run-in with law enforcement. Pierce's influence still continues today, uh, but it is nothing like it was in uh, the late 1990s and 2000. Tom O'Connor, a former FBI agent, has extensive experience related to domestic terrorism and white supremacy. He says the group crumbled following Dr. Pierce's death. The next person to take over, Eric Glebe, um, you know, pretty much ran the organization into the ground. And uh, he, the members that were dues paying members all decided, uh, many of them decided that they had nothing to do with Eric Glebe. Glebe became an outcast within the, the white power movement. And uh, you'll see that, you know, the National Alliance is not one of the groups that anybody hears about today. Coming up, while the influence of the National Alliance may be fading, counterterrorism experts say other groups are popping up in their place and they're using new methods to reach their audience. We'll have that story coming up tonight at 11. In January, the New York Times reported that Amazon made the decision to pull Dr. Pierce's book, The Turner Diaries, claiming it bears too many parallels to the attack on the U.S. Capitol in January. The symbolism of the, the noose that was erected on the Capitol grounds during that riot you know, that's what most people are tying directly to the Turner Diaries and what my dad wrote. But according to domestic terrorism expert Tom O'Connor, a former FBI agent, the groups identified that the January attack did not include the National Alliance. You're talking about groups like the Oath Keepers, the Proud, Proud Boys, uh, Boogaloo, Boogaloo Boys, different groups that we are now hearing about. Uh, the National Alliance um, was not one of the groups that, uh, that I have heard uh, being anything to do with anything related to uh, what's happening in the in the white power movement today. He says new extremist groups are rising up and using new technology to reach their audience. Apps that require a court order or FISA warrant to access. It used to take you know, a period of time for someone to become radicalized because they had to go to meetings, they had to actually go and do things. Now you can have somebody sitting in their basement on the internet watching videos and uh, conspiracy theories, and that flash to bang can take place in a much shorter period of time. While the activity of these groups is more difficult to monitor, in some ways he says it's also getting easier. There are those people who will actually call law enforcement and say, hey, I'm all about this and I'm anti-government, but this guy's talking about doing something. Um, so if you, if you put your self out there, there's more of an opportunity for law enforcement to bump into that and get in front of that and stop the event. For Pierce, there's a common thread that connects many of these lone actors, one the country has failed to address. We should be talking about our mental wellness states from the time, you know, our kids enter elementary school. Calvin says his own father's childhood was dominated by his grandfather's alcoholism and his grandmother's neglect. Unfortunately, when my dad was about eight years old, his father was killed. Um, he, you know, was uh, getting off a bus and he got hit by a car and was killed. And his mother was not a nurturing person at all. When Calvin Pierce became a father, he left the parenting style of his own dad behind. 
He and his wife adopted two baby girls after a trip to the Republic of Georgia. For me, self-esteem was such a, such a low point in my life. You know, it affected every aspect of my, my life, you know, from the way I interacted with my teachers, with my peers, with my parents, with anybody else. I always tried to be aware of that when I was trying to parent my children. Inspired by his own daughters, he and his wife started the Divine Child Foundation, a nonprofit which works to make a difference in the lives of the country's forgotten children. So my primary goal there is just to let them know that there's at least one person in the world that loves them completely, regardless of who they are or where they come from. A man who was once lost, now helping others find their way. Here for you in Pocahontas County, I'm Amy Moore, WVVA News.